show a quick video here on how to modify Cube World using Cheat Engine. Um, I found it really confusing at first, but I've learned the basics and found a pretty simple way to sum it up. So I'm just going to show how to do that. First, the thing that you're going to want to do is go into the internet browser that you have. I put some links inside the description. Follow them, and the first two are downloads. The next two are just resources to use. So you're going to want to download Cube... Uh, you already have Cubeworld. You're going to want to download Cheat Engine. You're also going to want to download this here, the top file, which is called cube.ct. It's the cheat table, which is going to be able to modify all your values in Cheat Engine. Uh, if you're all confused, don't worry about what I'm saying being confusing. Just do it, pretty much, like a Nike worker. <laughs> um, so just download it. Keep the file location for it. These two are just uh, number values that will show you how to modify like what their end result will be for modifying a uh, pet or weapon, etc. So uh, once you have everything downloaded, uh, open up Cube World and Cheat Engine. I'm going to restart Cheat Engine right here quickly because I had it open before. Uh, so. so open up Cube World and Cheat Engine. Uh, once your Cheat Engine is open, there's going to be a icon around right where my mouse is circling. And that is going to show you all the programs that are open on your computer. You're going to want to click cube.exe. That will open up your cube world inside Cheat Engine. You'll notice that nothing happens, however. This is because you haven't loaded the cheat table that you downloaded up. So you're going to want to find where it is, kubect, the top one on that page. I open that up, and you're going to get a little thing called cube world. Uh, just click that. Uh, basically, the way it works is the player commands are just values that you can edit, like I'll get into game right now, actually. Just once you have everything open, just go into game and Go into any world that you care. I'd really suggest having a new character, you know, not just modding everything. Um, having it all <laughs> messed up character. If you have a legit character, I would suggest using on a different one because it ruins the experience I have found myself. I fucked my main character up. I was up to, like, level 128, and it's not fun on that character anymore, so I had to restart. I'm at level 4. Um, just banter while the level's loading up itself. Alright, once you're in-game... I would suggest making it daytime so that you could see properly. And, um... My game is loaded. Alright, there we go. So, once you're in-game, you're gonna be wherever you are. That doesn't really matter, as long as it's daytime. Now, uh, the way that modding works is, first I'm gonna break it down into three categories. There is player modding, there is weapon modding, or gear modding, if you count armor, and there's pet modding. All those three are the three main things that you can really you know, take advantage of inside Cheat Engine. Player modding is the most simple. It's just straight up, you can do it easily, there's no random stuff in, like, you know, formulas or anything like that involved in it. Um, if, so, let's say you want to modify your player. Uh, you're going to open up, click player on this little menu here. Uh, and inside of there, there's going to be debug, looks, stats, skills, and equipment. You're going to want to open up looks if you want to change out how your character looks. It's not talking about modifying what they physically look like, it's talking about modifying their race or their scaling of any part of their body. Like, if you want to make the weapon bigger, so I'll click on scaling weapon, and I'll change the thing. It starts off at 0 0.94, which is just around 1. Um, so your weapon is normal stat. So I want to change it to 10 times normal size of a weapon. So I'll change this uh, numerical value to 10, and you'll see I get a huge-ass sword. Um, and it works, obviously. That's really fucking weird, but it works. Um, so, go back to my inventory. Inventory I just have open, so you don't need to pause the game, and it still lets you come out, the mouse come out of the screen. So, um, I'll change it back to 1. So, you can change the scaling of a question mark symbol. You might have it not question marked on your computer. Um, you can change feet, hands, torso, and your head. And special is your hang glider. So, head will obviously change how your head looks. And you can click race. Zero is... I would just experiment with it. Put different numbers in and it might change your race. I would suggest having two different characters open, you know, like having a frog character, uh, and seeing what the numerical value is when it says race on your cheat engine, for having them up instead of an elf. Um, elf I might, might be zero, it might just be bugged. Uh, this is still, you know, there's no modding support for Cube World, so it's all very iffy. Um, so statistics is your next thing. Um, inside the player, you can choose your level. So I'm level 166 right now, you can see. So I'm going to go to level whatever. I'm going to type in a fuckload of high numbers. So now I'm level like 543. Like 5 million something. Um, that changes your level, obviously. Uh, experience is how much experience you have inside your level. And if you're just going to level up by cheating, I really wouldn't care about putting this in. It's useless. 
Um, you can see I have 588 out of 1049 experience. So health points is your current health. There's no point in modifying this unless you want to set it up to like 9 million or something like that. Um, because it's talking about your actual health, not the health cap. You can change the um, cap for your health too. So right now it's 100% for cap. So if I change it to 200, um, yeah, 200, 200. Um, so you can see now my health limit has doubled. Um, and that's just, you know, it's straightforward. It's really straightforward. Mana points is your MP, and that will, it, it goes down by itself, so there's not much point. I could type in 50, so you an example. Um, you can see now it's at 50 times the amount of normal. Um, it scaled down to 100 instantly, and now it's automatically going back down to zero very slowly. Stamina, the same thing. It, it, it's your maximum stamina currently. It's not your cap. Um, other stats is, like, your class. It shows uh, some experience here, like uh, one is a warrior, two is ranger, etc. Um, specialization, like ninja or, or assassin for rogue. Uh, special hit power means that if you get a special weapon hit, you can change that. And your hit counter, which is the um, if you get a counter move or a critical strike, how much it will do. Um, so zero is, I think, currently how, because you have nothing in effect, so there's no point of editing these. Because it's just a tracker, it's not a setting value. Which means that if you change it to 1, it will go down to 0 instantly because you're not performing a hit. Um, money is obviously money. It goes straight to your copper coins only. So if you type in, I have, see I have 1631 whatever here. The 1631 will go into my gold because that's a lot higher than it. So that means I have that many copper total and it equates to this many money in game, as you can see. Um, platinum coins is direct to 259. 10. You can see there, I have that, and it's the same thing in game. Don't set things for too high. If I set my thing like, whoa, up there, you can see uh, it will scale back down a few numbers until it gets to a, a limit set by the game, or the numbers will become random. Um, so that's what you can do. I really won't mess with skills or equipment. Um, equipment we'll get into later. i rather use inventory last click slot. It's a lot less, um, it's, e it's, it's a lot easier to not fuck things up if you're just using the inventory, uh, this, this button down here. So. Uh, you can close a player, because that's all you really that there is for player right now. Uh, pet, I always have equipped, just because, just in case, you know. So, inventory is the cool one. This is where you can modify everything. So, uh, you're going to have an amount, you're going to have item type, subtype, modifier, rarity, material, adapted, if it's adapted or not, the level, and you can choose customization, which is the cubes. This is really useless, because it's hard to get, you know, perfect. Um, <laughs> perfect. Yeah, weird way to say it. Um, it's hard to get right unless you are, you know, you can, you can, you can choose block one for eight, let's say. Uh, I choose that and say one, block one, you can choose where it is exactly on the sword. Um, so that's really tedious. I don't bother with it because I just, I just use customization. You can choose how many used blocks there are on a weapon. You can see everything is a, um, question mark. So, um, this is the thing is you need to click something inside your game. So I'll change these shoulder pads here. Try to scroll down to an empty area. Uh, whatever. These shoulder pads here, you can see they're in the very corner, uh, almost the very corner, of my thing. They are power 73, etc, etc. The tempo, I'll show you an example here. Tempo is 2.5, and the power is 73. Now, power is decided by level. So, you can see how I clicked it, all those question marks went away, and I have actual values here. Value, see how the number is really high, but it's not actually? It's because the game set a random value which equates to a lower level. So if I set something up like uh, 1,000, that's not too high for the game, and it will choose uh, the game to have a thing that high. So you can power is 99 now because it's a level 1,000, which would have a higher power. Power caps out at 100. So if you're looking to have insanely powerful gear, you're going to want to edit the rarity. Rarity is what chooses. So if you see yellow gear, that's rarity 4. That's legendary gear. So if I change this to 4, you can see the shoulder plates also changed how they look, but the stat is also a lot higher now. Not higher, higher, but you can set this past 4 to go up to, like, if you have, like, 20, it will it will overload the game. Not literally, but the game won't be able to process. And if I set my sword to be your high level, for example, the tempo would be so high that I wouldn't be able to hit anything because it's going so fast. Um, so your rarity is what decides how powerful the stats are, and 1 through 4 decides how it looks. I'll go into more. There are some uh, models for weapons and armor. That are not put in the game yet, and that's for different material rather than uh, rarity. I'll go into that later. That's the last thing I'll touch on. 
modifier is the important thing. This is what decides all the stats for the weapon. The easiest way to choose this is by going online and seeing all these different values here. Now, effect is what chooses everything. So let's say I have the effect 20. It'll have a 2.5 modifier, which is just the highest possible for tempo, because it says TMP up here. Again, all these are inside of the um, description. So you can see now that all these different stats are set by the number they have for the modifier. And the modifier is chosen here. So you can see now that it says combinations on this page. So let's say I have the ID for the modifier set as 209. The effect would be 20. The model chosen would be 11. And the player uh, stat, or prefix, you know, whatever you call it, the shimmering, golden, masculine, I don't care what it says, It's this is what decides that. It's not really important. The two things that aren't important are the prefix and the owner, those are really useless. Um, the model and the uh, uh, effect number are really important. So let's say I, ha I wanted to have a weapon with a certain model, and I want to have a certain effect, right? I'd keep on choosing numbers here in this far left column, not the all the way to the left, but the first one is actually a numerical value. And I keep scrolling down, let's say I want to have 20 as the effect. I keep on looking for ones with 20. So 272 has one that's 20. Um, 314 has one that's 20. So, you can see how this works. You choose this number inside the modifier. So let's say I put 314 inside my cheat engine modifier. 314. So now, the tempo is going to be a lot higher because it's 20. So now, let's see how this is. Reg is only 1. It decreased all the different stats and it put them into tempo. So it's 19.2. So you could go ahead and um, the real thing is you go through each one of these numbers has 20 or whatever number you want to use for the effect until you get the right model. The model is how it looks. Um, and that's how you basically decide. So let's say I want to have a weapon with a lot of uh, critical hit power, right? You see CRT, the highest possible for CRT, is 20 and 19. So you can either put 20 or 19 in, and then you just want to say, oh, I want to have like um, shoulder plays that look some kind of way. So, so I'll put 19 as the modifier in. And now it's probably going to have a lot of crit or tempo. You can see the crit is 0 0.5, which puts some in, and tempo is at 18.2. So if I go back here, I'll choose 4 as an example for my critical hit chance. Um, I really experienced with modifier, it's really just, you can put random numbers until you get what you want. It'll take a lot longer, but use that list just to get, give you a little bit of a guide to know what you're talking about, you know? So I can just put a random number in there. It would change how it looks, yeah. Um, see? Uh, so you can set the, uh, whatever modifier it would be, and now it has different stats. Stats are decided by the modifier along with the, um, appearance of the armor, except for the material. That is another thing that will change it. Rarity also changes it, as I said, um, so all these three things here are for just, you know, customizing a weapon. You can choose if it's adapted or not, it really doesn't matter, it doesn't do anything. Um, amounts I would not mess with unless you're using a weapon that can stack, such as a potion. So there's 30 bombs here, I could choose the number of bombs I want. So if I click bombs, right, all the stats in my cube, yeah, cheat engine, changed. So now I've got 30 bombs, so if I change that to 200 or 550 bombs, I've got 550 bombs in my inventory now. So that's that. Um, subtype and item type really just say, like, this is whatever this item is, and this is a to bomb. I wouldn't mess with it except for using pets, which is the next thing. Uh, before we get to that, I'll show you a change how the armor uh, material is, how to get the, like, you know, for bone armor or obsidian armor. So if I chose worn chest armor, right, I'm going to set the rarity of 4. Or 5. No, let's go to 4. Because that's legendary, and that's the last one that actually has a model. So now you can see it's gold, it's rare, it's it's but it's not anything that's special. You could get that after a few boss fights if you use you you know if you're farming plus fours. So let's say I set the material to something besides one. I'll set it to like two. You can see how the uh, appearance have changed. Uh, the numbers near near this will be the deciders. So I know that six through eight have uh, appearance on it. So you can see five here. I wouldn't go above ten or I wouldn't go above twenty. I haven't experimented, but I know that there's not twenty forbidden models so far. That's just what I'm calling them. So you can see now that this is this new obsidian armor look to it. And yeah, so that's how you can change that. The, the material will choose how it is. So if I choose six, as it is, let's say, you can see now it looks different again. So you can see it just says chest armor. That's just all it says. And it can be worn by anyone, which is cool. Some of these can be worn by anyone. Um, 
You really have to experiment with it. The things I'd experiment with are, is um, material and modifier. Rarity will just use the power, and anything above 5 or above 4 will not change how it looks. Um, if you're choosing a different material, once you're out of the main materials for the armor, it will not change how it looks. It will just, uh, it will just change, you know, how powerful it is. So, um, that's how you get that. So let's say, for example, I want to choose my rogue chest piece, and you, every, if you've seen online, there's some forms showing bone armor. Um, that is, so I click my chest here, right, that's cotton chest armor, which is for a rogue. I'm set the material to 6. And that's that other RP's armor that was there. The 7 is bone armor. So you can see now it's all white, and it will say bone chest armor. You can choose the power of this with rarity and, um, modifier. And the level 2, but the level really caps out past 2000, so. Um, yeah. So, let's say you're a low-level character that wants overpowered armor. Just set your uh, rarity really high and set a level that suits you so you can use the armor. Um, I know 8 is like this silverish armor. Let's see. That's a cool Templar kind of look to it. Um, so that's how you change that and get the forbidden models, and how you change the rarity, the modifier, and everything else for it. Um, so you can see modifier sets. Critical hit, regeneration, tempo, hit points and damage. Um, so that's that's what decides that for all the armor and stuff. It works for everything. Um, weapons, armor, jewelry, everything works for it. Um, I wouldn't set it for anything like uh, light. Just basically modify the values that the game gives you inside Sheet Edge. So I'll show you how to modify pets now. This is the this is fun. Um, so now you can click on your pets tab. You're gonna need pets for this. If you want to be able to duplicate an item, all you have to do is click all these boxes down until everything with the plus is filled. So if I wanted to duplicate something, I'd click the the all these. And don't you don't need to click customization. So whatever I just clicked, it will tell me when I lift that up. It will say, oh, but I still need some shit inside there because you know all the stats are locked in. That's what the X's do. So if I click somewhere now. See, my chest pieces are in my fucking pet, because all the stats are locked in. <laughs> um, so I really would be careful with messing up with this stuff. Some items, like the pineapple there, that can't be removed. Um, anyway, so, moving a pet is, once you, have, once you have a pet, the game really, for Cheat Engine, it's not about editing, right? It's not about, it's not about, it's not about creating, I mean. It's about editing, so you're going to want to get as much stuff as you want, duplicating it, and then change the stats. So let's say I want to have, instead of a blue slime, I, can, I want a lich, even though you can't get it. Um, I'll go into this other link that I put in the description, and it will show me all the different numbers for the uh, NPC. So let's say I want a lich. Uh, I'll find lich on here. You could do control F, but um, 117 is a lich. So I'm going to go back in the game, and see how it says subtype, this is what you want to edit. Subtype is the number. I set to 117. My pet is now going to be a lich. See? Level 40 Lich. Uh, that's how you edit pets. It works for anything. There's some enemies or, you know, stuff you can get in there, too. These will X pets. The bigger ones won't be able to follow you as well because they'll clog with trees, and they can't stand directly on top of you. See how the Lich is, like, following in circles around there? He's having trouble. Um, all their attacks do work. Uh, some enemies, like, if you spawn in a vampire, they won't have a sword, as they usually do. Or daggers, you know, whatever, because they're rogues. Um... So that's how you modify pets, and player stats, and armor. Uh, if you have any questions, just post them inside comments. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I, this is my first tutorial I've really posted out, and I'm experimenting with, you know, just how to do stuff. So if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.